Hello and welcome to the F1 Feeder Series podcast, your guide to keeping up to date on everything in the junior single-seater world. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and we've previewed Formula 2 and Indy Lights. We've watched Formula Regional Asia and F4 UAE, but we haven't dived fully into FIA Formula 3. Luckily, we are going to right this wrong in this very episode, and to make up for our crimes against F3 fans everywhere, we've got a Formula 3 driver joining us on today's podcast. We've spoken a lot about F4 UAE on the podcast before, and we've got a driver who is well used to success in the Middle East. 2020 F4 UAE champion Francesco Pizzi. Not as much racing in 2022 for you so far, Francesco, but how are your three days of testing? Yeah, first of all, I Charlie, I Jim, and I all the fans. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, of course, we had. It was the first time I met. I drove uh, with my team because I already drove the FAA three uh, in twenty twenty, not twenty twenty one, but the year before. And then uh, this year we, we yeah, we had the deal with Charles, and then we, this was the first time we had the chance to work together on track. Um, yeah, the first day was quite positive. We didn't, we could complete the mileage we wanted to at the end, and uh, we were quite competitive uh, entering the top ten on the afternoon. And then the second day we were a bit stopped by some technical issues in the morning, and then uh, from the, yeah from the afternoon then we could uh, continue our running back like it was the like normally we had we didn't use the, the new tires on the same points as the other because we had to do a bit of a different plan to recover the mileage so we could fulfill all the afternoon but still was the was the all the pace was was good and uh, we continued that way and on the third day we focused more on the performance in the morning and then for the afternoon more on the long run uh long runs for the race simulations and stuff and yeah of course the test for us was the first meeting with the team and uh we got to know each other a bit and uh, it was a positive a positive start i'd say because we we know that now we're quite competitive in the in the middle of the pack and uh we can do some good races at the start uh yeah of course we we are going to put all, our, all of our energy to catch back the most as possible, to do the most step as possible before the race and to become more competitive than the test as well for their first race event. Yeah, and the first race event isn't far away, which is, oh, I just feel so thankful now. We've got the F1 feeder series, the ones actually on the F1 weekend, almost starting. We've had to kick out the regular spot for Floris and replace him with the triumphant return of Mr. Charlie Parker, the F3 editor for F1 Feeder Series. How are you, Charlie? And how do you feel about replacing the amazing hair of Mr. Visman? Triumphant return is correct. Fan favorite, Charlie Parker, is back. I have decided with the hat, so I don't I don't step on Floris's toes with his hair. So my hair is terrible, so, but it's great to be back, second podcast. We were speaking just before the podcast started, and I really need to emphasize what I heard from Francesco. That <laughs> we talked about haircuts and somebody stepping on someone's toes. Could you let us know and let the fans know what you were just saying about your own hair? Because you're going for a haircut soon at a very strategic time, aren't you? Yeah, because for the we like there was the the me all the media of the appointments this weekend. So I like my hair like more like it is now. But then it's, uh, it's not easy to manage. So it takes a long time to dry and to prepare and stuff like that. And as well with the helmet, it's not the most comfortable thing. So then I took the pictures and I'm going for a haircut. I'm going for short hair. So I have time to grow for the next media appointment next year. <laughs> Just for the benefit of anybody who is listening rather than watching. So Francesco is sporting hair, which I don't know, goes down to about ear length, which yeah, glorious flowing. Yeah, I mean, there you go. I, Dan right, passes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, almost <laughs> at his mouth, almost yeah. at his mouth. And he's told us that he wanted that just for the media opportunities because <laughs> it's a genius. He has, he has to, this is all the media photos that you see when Francesco wins a race, thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. But in the actual season, doesn't have to worry about Balaclava and his hair being messy. So a little bit of insight into the divas of Formula 3. Wow. <laughs> a quick reminder to like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're old school and listening to the audio only version, please leave a review on whatever podcast platform you're using. It really helps us out. Perhaps you can talk about how good Mr. Pizzi's hair is. 
we've got quite a bit to go through, mainly because we've had cars on track, Charlie. Formula 3 testing. We had a sandstorm. I uh, saw a lot of Darud memes. Darud sandstorm. Yeah, a lot of those memes going around. But apart from those, how was testing? Well, testing was is very interesting this year because last year, Trident broke the stranglehold. Prima had on the competition. And I was very interested coming into this season to see how it had all mixed up. And testing, Prima, the very first de- session, they were on top but they didn't show up for the rest of it. We had ART on top. We had high tech on top. We had Trident on top. And that's the main takeaways is, is Prima F3 no longer a domination, but also a bit lower down this, we have a uh, new Williams Academy driver, Zach O'Sullivan, really shining. He came uh, in the top 11, four times over testing. So it's a really good weekend or three days. It wasn't a weekend for him. Yeah, it's... <sighs> We spoke about this in the podcast with Josh Revel as well, that Prima may not be going into this season as the out-and-out favourites in both Formula 2 and now he's saying Formula 3 as well. Who do you think is the team to beat this year and why is it Sheru? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't okay. think it's Sheru. <laughs> go, go on, Charlie. In, in all seriousness, who who do you think is that team that might is it just going to be tried? And I'm, going, I'm going to surprise you, after after the race oh, one, we we, we, yeah. we oh. know we know. <laughs> <laughs> you had it here first. They're winning both races. Uh, no, it's I think it's Trident again. Uh, Johnny Edgar is coming into his second season. He really pulled really pulled that car in last year. Just pulled it as far as he could, even though that wasn't a great team last year. And uh, the boy from Barbados, Zane Maloney. Mm. That's a good team this year. I think Trident probably will get it again and the Drivers' Championship this time. How does that sit with you, Francesco? You mentioned before that you know that you are and Sheru and your teammates are in the middle of the pack and you're just trying to claw your way further up. Did you see anything from either... The, we all know you can't take things from testing times, but did you see anything from being on track, following some of the, the cars, any teams that you think are particularly strong for Formula 3 this year? Of course, we saw in the last uh, four sessions, iTech be leading competitive with Dajar, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I worked with uh, both Johnny and Jack in Van Amme's fourth uh, days in, in F4. I think they are two really good drivers um, with fully different characteristics, but they are both really good drivers, I think. And uh, yeah, one, they are with the two best teams uh, of the of the park and and their, and their teammates as well are really competitive. I think um, the first uh, four teams I think have really good lineups for what I saw, um, and as well, yeah, the, some of them were confirmed up front, but they saw at the grid was a lot more mixed up than last year for me. I saw more kind of changes than last year, where it was kind of like first team, second team, third team. Now a bit. It looks like now the cars are a bit closer to, to like every car, the level is closer and uh, then uh, the driver can make a bit more of a difference. Uh, I think that's, that's one of the things as well. Of course, I'm not saying that if you drive with the slowest car on the grid and the fastest car against the fastest car, you're going to beat it. But, you know, you can make CL difference and you can place it uh, upper front than your team is actually. I think it's really close. Uh, the difference is not as big as last year. I think last year got, got everyone closer. Did you watch a lot of FIA F3 last year, Francesco? Uh, I think from 2018, I haven't lost a race of F3 and F2, uh, to, to be honest. F3 since, since after GP3 and F2 since uh, the new generation. Amazing. And now you get to race in it. What a big step up. Are you? Uh, yeah. is, it, is it like a dream coming true? Yeah, it's like a dream because at the end, uh, yeah, you're you're basically, you know, you're on TV, you're such a big bro- broadcast now. And as well, uh, Italian is just me and truly in, uh, in F2 and F3. So, you know, it's you know, we have, it's quite a dream because, you know, many people from my city, like my classmates and, you know, they saw me like in a like kind of being important but for me i'm not <laughs> still you know you have the like this kind of more view to the to all the fans and 
it's a really big step, especially because now the car is like it has a lot of downforce and uh, to drive is really fun. I like for me in Bahrain, every lap, every time you know you have to finish a run, I want to get back in the car to do it more because it's uh, you know it's a new car and you want to learn the most of it. And you know, I went the the testing finished, I was like, no, it can, and now I want to do more. <laughs> You don't have long to wait. Uh, we were going to ask about the, the, the different car and the, the characteristic differences between the Formula Regional one, but big one, I suppose, is how does it feel pressing that DRS button and having to just have that speed boost? Yeah, it's quite crazy on the straight. You f- you really feel it like the push when you open it, and especially like sometimes, like you you know, you have the DRS on being really close to the exit of the corner. So mm. like sometimes if you press it too early, actually you you get a snap because it's like full grip, zero grip on the rear, you know. So it's crazy, and the speed boost that it gives you is like um, it's like crazy on the straight. Like safety time and DRS is really good, but of course we know in the races there's gonna be like DRS train, so it's not gonna be as easy. But still, you know, you feel a lot the effect of DRS. Is it something you actually have to train for, excuse the pun, with DRS? Do you have the, like, Sharu saying, okay, do a few laps following a car with DRS to see what it's like to get your racecraft up? You never really simulate the same effect as the Dirty Air gives you. So it's quite hard to feel. And, uh, yeah, it's mostly, like, just training on track and having that feeling, you know, of moving with the DRS because at the end you cannot be as sharp as you will be without you know in the movements when you try an overtake or something like that but at the end it's something you get used to like every car you know you have to get adapted to different kind of dirty air in some feels more in some way in other ways so it's just a more thing to get adapted to just one more thing to worry about there's a just a massive speed improvement um charlie we everybody not just you but we've all been thinking what's going to happen in Formula 3 this year before testing. Did you see anything from testing that has made you change your opinions on which teams, which drivers are going to be strong? I think there was one change for me. I think last year, the rookies, they they struggled a bit. But this year, I think, again, we're taking things from testing times, probably not the greatest thing in the world. But the rookies are pretty strong this year. And I didn't, before (laughs) testing, I didn't really expect Hajar to be mm. up there but he uh Hajar is now with Oliver Behrman as my two dark horse candidates for the titles who is your light horse candidates for the titles? uh we got one from Prima one from Trident we got Johnny Edgar and we got Arthur Leclerc yeah Leclerc kind of goes in after triumphantly winning earlier in the year um I'm looking through the grid, though. So let's actually do a little, this is a little bit more off the cuff. Uh, and this goes to both of you, Francesco and Charlie, that Trident drivers, Edgar Stanek Maloney, strong. Prima drivers, Leclerc Crawford Behrman, strong. ART drivers, Martin Saucy Correa, strong. It's like the whole, the whole grid at the top bit. It's, it could be one of, what's that going to be, 12, 15 odd drivers, Francesco included. I mean, go down to, go even down to like high tech Sheru MP that, that I, I consider them like they've got good drivers it's really good grid this year Francesco are you mindful of any particular drivers you'd have raced against some of these guys already who you think especially on the rookie side of things may surprise people yourself excluded <laughs> uh, let's say that for me, at the end, when I get the visor down, I don't really care, you know, about what you have again. <laughs> but yeah, you know, at the end, of, of course, the rookie is is a title we can is, that could be an, an idea. But you know, there are rookies as well for Prem and Trident up front, and uh, you know, and as well, people rookies with more experience than me because as well, you know, I'm not. I, I think I'm not the youngest on the grid for sure, but like the youngest driver than me, they have more experience on the car anyway so then it's like and you know you have some drivers that are older than me but are rookies so it depends you know what experience you arrive to the car with because uh you know there are some cars that are closer in to the FIA free i think that of course uh yeah you know we are there for where i think stands for the moment you know the biggest rivals are mp and uh, Sharu and the uh, itech uh, but let's say that for us the aim is always to do the best we can so it doesn't really matter what we have 
go around, but you to put behind the most cars possible. Hopefully, twenty nine. <laughs> Indeed, one of well, three of those twenty nine cars would be Van Amersfoort. So, new team for Formula Three this year, and I suspect you may have thought I might ask this. Did you know much about Van Amersfoort's intentions to be stepping up to F three and F two this year? You've obviously got the links there. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's say I think I knew it before the just a bit before the announcement. Um, mm-hmm. Because yeah, of course I was still racing for the team when the announcement came out after two years as well. You know, when I knew I knew everyone in there like really well because I spent a lot of time there, especially with COVID. It was not so easy to travel, so then mm-hmm. I used to spend a lot of time in uh, in in their workshop. So then I know really many people there and. Uh, uh, yeah, I knew it a bit earlier. I think uh, I hope for them they're going to do well, you know, because after three years, I know the people are working really hard to catch a bit what the other teams have done in the past years. And uh, yeah, I wish them the best for this season. Weird to not be there for this year, or do you think this is just part of racing? Uh, it's part of racing, you know, because as well for my personal growth as a driver, it was not good to stay with that, with the same team for three years because, you know, you need to change a bit approach to learn new things because at the end you know you change you change category but the kind of approach yeah. is still the same and you need as well to explore a bit different things and to learn from different uh, people as well you know to get to uh, uh yeah learn just a different environments because for me there was like home after two years and you know i came into Chicago, you know everything is new like when i arrived in banana sports so there's an every time it's a new thing and it's a part of the driver to adapt you know at the end it's still single it's still the feeder series so it's not uh, f1 yet so you you as well it's good to change to arrive the most prepared as possible the right moment was there any we ought to be honest was there any discussions about staying for this year going to f3 or just staying in form of the regional with van amersport um we weren't going to stay in regional. That was uh, we, because I started testing in regional. We tried different teams. We never retested with Van Amersfoort. And uh, for how the, few, the things went last season, we chose to, you know, part ways uh, with the team. But then, you know, with the three could have been a choice if I was going to choose to go to the category. But was, let's say, the I really like work from Sharu and my manager to get me into the into the seat for the next year because. Uh, we we did all the tests uh, in the, the postseason testing with uh, regional and then uh, late nearly at Christmas you know we we started talking with Sharu so then it was a really late deal and uh, we got it all together before the season started but yeah it it was not supposed to happen so the F three was not in in discussion. Oh, interesting things. Uh- Charlie, you don't have any affiliation to Van Amersfoort. What do you think their chances are going to be this year? I think it's going to be interesting because they're winners. They, they've won a lot and they're going to come into F3. They've uh, taken over HWA, who, who are not winners, but they've taken, they've taken that spot from HWA. And it's going to be, I think, like, low expectations for VAR in their first season in F3 and F2, let's just see, get their feet wet, see what happens. Do you think it's going to be a little bit of a fresher off then for, for VAR this year, uh, with more thoughts to, I don't know, 2023, 2024 to start working their way up the grid? Yeah, I, I, they, should, they should not have that much pressure on themselves if they are putting that pressure on themselves. So do you think it's going to be a case of not finishing bottom is successful? Yeah, see how many points you can grab. Yeah, I think they have uh, Colapinto is a really good driver, so they they could do uh, some good things this season. Uh, maybe you know they are not gonna fight for wins every race, but I think sometimes they can they can grab a lot of points for sure. Yeah, uh, Colapinto has been very highly thought of on this podcast previously, and as another another name for people to associate with people championing him. Um, we spoke about points for VAR, Francesco. What are your goals for this year? Are you looking at sniffing a podium here and there, or are you just trying to finish as high up and finish races throughout the year? 
Uh, we have to see because testing doesn't say much. You know, you, you know that you're not two seconds off or you're not uh, one second ahead. But, uh, you know, it all depends how the, the, the season evolves because you always start the season one way and then it ends up another. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's say from last season, I learned a bit to step it down with goals for the moment, just do the best we can with what we have and hopefully uh, have the best season we, we, we can, of course, because I think we can grab some points there and thereabouts. And of course, with the, the reverse grids, uh, maybe, you know, a, a podium could be possible. But uh, first of all, we have to focus on doing our job and then after we can look at the results because they're just going to be a result of the good job, I think. And have you had a different expectation now you've gone through testing about what to expect for this year? I expect it to be slower, to be honest. <laughs> 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 then uh, I didn't expect to be, I expect to be a bit less competitive, a bit more work to do, especially at the start. But uh, yeah, I felt that with the car straight away. So it was not, not too bad. You know, I was in the pack from the start, which is the important thing because, you know, when you're there, then. You, you know, you can do, it's more like you can do more things, normal, but you're a bit at the back, you know, it's harder to get in some, let's say, lucky spots and some lucky results then. But now we're in the pack, so it's possible that when we do our job and we do we get everything up together, you can actually take some really good points out of the races. I think you, you bring up a good point. I think you learn a lot more between weekend one and weekend two than you do from test into weekend one. I think you, you learn more about where everyone is, where your car is, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure, because uh, you see as well, in the same is, as in F3, as in F2 and other categories, you know, uh, we saw many years that Prema didn't top the testing and then they went into the races uh, dominating absolutely. So then, you know, there is, you never really know. And you saw as well, you see as well sometimes, you know, because because these teams are a bit hiding, then you see lower teams up front, but, you know, it's a bit different. You know, first race, you understand a bit where you are, and then you understand a bit the work. As well, this year, where the Bahrain is such a special track, it's different than all the others with the asphalt and all this characteristic and the heats and the sun and everything. It's going to be fully different than the European season. So then we have, like, Bahrain and then the European season. So it's going to be two different parts of the season. Uh, final thing for me on this, just about your season upcoming with your route. We saw Logan, Logan Sargent, do so well there. Is that something that you think might have galvanized the team? Yeah, I think this is, of course, uh, this galvanizes the team because the, they've been growing from the first year to now. They've improved uh, every year. Last year, they could get in such an experienced driver and a really good driver as well so, as Sargent. Um, it's shown as well that the car has improved throughout the year because the race they won the race in the last race, so that means you know the the car develops every every race throughout the year. They had some improvements and some uh, developing to do, and then uh, they came out at the end fifth in the team's championship, and they you know they they end up on high. They didn't start well, and then they dropped. They they scored more points like throughout all the season, and then with the peak at the last race, I think this year we can do. Well, of course, I don't have the same experience as him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think he helped a lot of the team to grow last year. So uh, then this year we could do some good things, I think. Yeah, don't have the same level of experience of him yet. So we're moving on to the part of the podcast where viewers and listeners have their say with hashtag AskF1FS. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag, hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel, or simply commenting on our YouTube videos and asking whatever it is that's on your mind. This one comes from Sam via Twitter, and he wants to know that you've got success in F4. Do you think that matters as you move up to teams and sponsors, or does it depend on your last season? Um, I think uh, getting the deal done with Sherry was as, was especially for the results in F4 because at the end uh, one uh, not good season you know uh, doesn't put you in the light but uh, you know at the, at the end the team believed that uh, I had uh, the talent to do well because of the F4 season so that of course helped me this year to get in a good team for F3 and you know at the end it doesn't fully affect uh, your your continuing of the season, but it can help sometimes, you know, because of course it's 
every time it gets harder, let's say, of course, the easier part because you have a lot of testing, then every time it gets harder and harder. But of course, it can help you, you know, because it shows that you have something and you don't have, you know, especially doing it in the rookie year, not like after three years of the pro shows a lot, I think. Just a follow up question on my side of this, actually. You mentioned Italian connection earlier, the Italian driver. So that F4 uh, Italy season, it was Italian dominated by yourself and Gabriella. Are you surprised that you're not going to be racing him this year? Uh, yeah, when we moved to F3, of course, we knew that we, we weren't going to race against each other mm. because yeah, I, I, can, I think I, for me, it was like clear that he was going to stay in regional with the RT another season. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, of course, it's going to be strange because I think we raced, we raced against each other since 2013, probably. Uh, just one season in 2017, I think, because he's, we are we passed like two, four months between each other. He's, I mean, I'm older of four months. And uh, so he stayed one more year in the in the smaller category. And then I passed to the older ones. And then we didn't race against each other for like one, one year or two. But then we always raced against each other again in race cars. So last year, we didn't enjoy ourselves that much because we were far. But of course, the F4 was a really good season, I think. Uh, we had some good races. Uh, you know, we have we have really different drivers at the end because mm. we have diff- fully different characteristics. But uh, yeah, the, some Monza was a really fun race, of course. So <laughs> everyone knows that. Well, you speak about last year and uh, AS19, uh, big fan. <laughs> Charlie's shaking his head for some reason. I won't go into this. Uh, how good do you reckon last year was for you? And are you feeling prepared to go into F3 after just one year of Freca? For me, um, my let's say because when we passed from karting to F4, we had kind of a, of the uh, of our project for the future. And for us, uh, because at that moment, Regional and Renault were not together. So it was not so, so competitive between the two. So the goal was more to do two, uh, two years of F4 and then to F3. Uh, like kind of uh, what Jack and Johnny did and uh, all the drivers were almost like Berman and the same, you know, they did two years of F4 and then to F3. But for me, uh, let's say the first season was uh, so good. But then uh, the second season, I was basically forced to win everything by far if I would have stayed. Uh, so that's as well not good because you know then you see some other drivers having some growth like very much at the end of the season of 2020 and then start of 2021 and new drivers coming so it's not like you have it easy so then for us it was better to go a step to the front and learn a bit more and uh, of course it was a tough season because we didn't know what the level of the teams was going to be so it was really hard to make the choice of where to go of course, at the end, it was a really tough season, but, you know, you learn more for the season when you're there than when you're at the front, because at the, one, at the front, everything comes easy. And let's say at the when you're there, it's like when you have good results, you really have to do it every inch together. So I think that helped me a lot to be a better driver for this season and uh, keep on going for the next one. Well, this ties in quite nicely with this question from Oppie 7407 via Discord. You... Because you say that you uh, improved yourself mentally as you go for the season, did you exceed any of your goals that you set yourself last year? Last year, for me, I think in uh, in F four I was really inconsistent. I think especially with my standards being really high because I was never happy until I was uh, P one. So then sometimes you know you have to be happy even if you're not, and uh, get you know sometimes you're not the most competitive. Some tracks you don't know as well as others. And last year learned me a lot to be to accept to to lose sometimes, and uh, learn more from the losses than from when you win. And then, you know, uh, I think it, at the end of the season was when we were consistent at the start. I think at the start I was doing like usually always, like one really one close to the top ten, one really far, one close again. And at the, at the end of the year, a bit stabilized more towards you know between 10 and 15 but at least you know we weren't the fastest but you know you were always there so as soon as there was some penalties like in Red Bull Ring you know you could get the points so then that improved a lot of things from last season and uh, as well mentally a bit uh, more stable than uh, in F4 you know where I think sometimes I I lost many points because of wanting too much. Do you think that's going to be a thing you'll go into this year just patience maybe? I think, yeah, of course, we're going to be patient because we don't have uh, many expectations. We just want to do the best we can. We just want to do our job well. 
because you know when you do your job well then you know the results are gonna come you're gonna do you have to try to do the best you can with what you have so uh for the like, right now i don't have much experience in the car so you know i can get maybe maximum i'm not the fastest driver on the grid but i can get some good results and uh, you know then at the end that could uh help as well you know being always uh, cool and never losing your head for having let's say one you know result not good results you always have to keep going and try to work for the next one thank you this question is from a mysterious full stop nothing else as a name uh by, by twitter yeah uh at xcg 24 f1 mysterious mysterious and i suspect it's for uh for you, Francesco, but let's go with you, Charlie, because I'll get you back involved. What's your main goal for 2022? And we'll come to you afterwards, Francesco. My main goal is to improve on my journalistic abilities and um, go into my final year of university, studying sports journalism. If you don't know, if you, if you don't know, you should follow me on Twitter. Unbelievable. If you don't. <laughs> Fan uh, favourite. People have got to be followed. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I have something cooking that I'm not allowed to talk about yet. I'm just hoping that comes through. Ooh, that's intriguing. Well, next time in the podcast, you'll have to let us know how your cooking is going. Um, I presume one of the other things is taking your hat off and having florist like hair. Never. <laughs> you could only dream <laughs> of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Floris is so old news. What's your main goal for 2022? Apart from having a haircut. Yeah, for from a haircut, then uh, for me is to finish my school year and going into my last contest for the next year. So then I keep on going with my studies, uh, choose what I want to study for university because I don't know yet. So I got to figure that out. <laughs> and uh, of course, hoping that I could can improve the most as possible as a driver and uh, technically and mentally and to be ready for the next the next step of the next season. And uh, you know, at the end, uh, results-wise, I don't really have a goal. I just want to do the best I can and always maximizing my opportunities of the season. It's funny, isn't it, or well, for me, that we obviously know that you're all racing. We also know that you're all teenagers for the most part, but you are still going through school on the very unlikely situation that you don't become an F1 driver. What's it like having to live this double life? Do, like, do your school friends actively follow what's going on? Um, I think actually, you know, I don't think many drivers study. I'm not sure because many stop like at a certain point. Mm. I think uh, that for me, so I always started racing at uh, six. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, many times uh, people say no, but it's not a, a sport and blah, 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 because you just have accelerate and turn the wheel. And uh, so then at the, at, when I was a kid until like I was 15, let's say people didn't really care about what I was doing because they thought it was not a sport but then like I think after I won the UAE some of my classmates read an article on a really important journal in Italy so then it was like oh it's good and then and then people start to watch try to survive and <laughs> start following oh, races <laughs> you know you, you know as well when you get older you understand a bit more you know for boys you get the passion of cars when you have to buy one so let's say mm -hmm. at, at my age everyone is getting close to 18 close to buy the first car and starting their passion about f one so now i have many classmates full of music <laughs> Well, I would argue, and this is what I've always said, that it's not a sport unless it's on four wheels. So that can be your line back to these people. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. I'm not. Uh, if it's not Formula Racing, it's not racing. It's not for me. Uh, but that's not. We're not here to speak about me. We're here to speak about Francesco. And this question comes from Floris Fisman at Floris Fisman on Twitter, who wants to know how do you get your hair so nice? No, he doesn't. He says. <laughs> In 2020, you were F4 UAE champion, Italian F4 runner-up. 2021 saw just two points finishes in Freca, both with VAR. Why was it such a stark contrast? Was it the car? Was it mental? What His was it? His opinions don't represent mine. <laughs> what? His opinions do not represent mine. <laughs> wait, wait let, let me see. Let's see what Charlie says. I want to see what Charlie says first. What was the uh, reason? <laughs> the car let you down. It's not your okay. ability. Well, thank you. I, I, I enjoy having a support out there. But of course, uh, I think it's, you know, the, the, yes, we were not the best team on the grid. That shows the results as well from all of us, all my teammates. 
I could I could have done a better job, yes, because I didn't I wasn't the best of my teammates, so I could have done a better job, that's for sure. I wasn't the last, but I wasn't the best. So it means that for me, I wasn't uh, maximizing the car. I think as well for driving, uh, you know, different techniques and stuff like that. But uh, we could have done a bit better all together. I think working together, but um, I think a bit, uh, you know, the desire of both the team and me to be successful, uh, a bit put us against each other because we want both. We both wanted to to do well to get podiums, you know, like in a four. But then it didn't happen, so then it was uh, not uh, the best condition to work in. And uh, as well, the, the the Renault teams were more competitive as well, you know, like really good teams, you know, categories like Prema. They came from regional, they struggled a lot at the start. And uh, yeah, with the experienced driver like Vidalis and Aaron, then they worked their way up and they say, let's say our team were three rookies. So it was really hard for the team to develop the car around us. And uh, I think this year they can improve a lot with uh, Cass. I think he's a good driver and he has experience on the car, so they can improve a lot. But of course, yeah, we are a bit limited by both. But we, I could have done better results, but uh, I don't think I could have uh, fought for a championship. Do you think when you say about having three rookies, that level of experience, just somebody who's been there and done that, is really crucial for a team? when they're looking at which drivers to hire, that you'd want to have somebody who's had experience. And do you think having the three rookies is possibly part of the problem? I think I think uh, for the team was hard last year to choose because they didn't know what level they go they were going to go on. Of course, they knew me, so they knew I was going to be competitive for, from their point of view for this season. But then the level was so wide. And, you know, at the testing as well, we were always in the top 10, apart from in Poikar, where we were like still 14 or something like that. So we were close, but uh, we were in Imola in like eighth and in and in Barcelona like 10th. So then we were competitive in like three tenths from top. So, you know, you're there. But then we were to the first race and let's say the others took their way off. So then uh, mm-hmm. they were a bit quicker. And uh, after that, we lost a bit of the development, I think, because we thought we were going to be more competitive. And as well, um, I think is you know, the team starts a bit more experienced drivers because uh, our rookie drivers always learning and, you know, he may change his ideas or his driving style from the start to the end. Meanwhile, uh, experienced driver already has kind of an imprinting so he can keep on going with his driving style and keep developing the car towards like a uh, normal one meanwhile the driver the driver can change a bit so then it was hard to follow especially because uh, me and my teammates had different uh different driving styles so then everyone, every one of us was giving different uh different feedback and it was really hard to develop a car on like three different cars you know so then uh, i can understand as well the team struggling a bit to follow a good route well um there's your answer, Floris. There were sandbags in the car. The other teams took the out. And, and VAR forgot to take out. It's as simple as that. But thank you for giving yeah, me yeah. A, a difficult question to, to ask. Floris, please never tweet in again. Um, <laughs> you won't have to next no, time. No. <laughs> <It'll be here. laughs> Harry wants to know, how are you approaching your rookie season in F3 and are you hoping to be straight on the pace, uh, challenging for winter titles, or do you see this as more of a building season? I see it uh, as both because we want to build, but of course you want to get results while you build as well. So the focus is to, you know, follow a certain route and uh, at the end to uh, continue it for next year. And this year, get of, of course, we don't want to, let's say, not get any results this year and everything next year, but we want to get few results. Of course, we're going to wait for them. We don't want to rush for having results on the first race because we know that would be unrealistic, but we want to work as hard as possible to get to the top team space. I think now we have a good pace, let's say, to fight for points, uh, but we don't have yet the pace to to win races. But uh, of course, we're going to work for that together with the team as well. You know, uh, develop developing the car, the car toward towards the year, like more to a car that fits so it's my driving a bit more, and then we can like I- improve as well together because and you know now we started a bit. I drove a different car, they, have a, they had a different driver, and then now they're kind of starting to, uh, be, to get the ideas together and get more a car that is like better drivable for me, let's say, and then to improve together because, yeah, you know, sometimes you have some uh, specialties and you have to 
focus more on those, you know, and then if you have like a different car, then you cannot maximize uh, your potential and with another car you can. So then you have as well to try to get the car that suits you the best because maybe it suits another driver well, but not yeah. you. And then you have to change a bit, a bit, a little bit to get the last, the last tenth because at the end, you know, I think there was just uh, four tenths from P4 to P20 in the last day of testing in F3. So then, you know, it's really close. Uh, everything can make a difference. Yeah, it really does show how thrilling F3 could be when you have such a close amount of uh, running there. Um, with or without uh, sandstorms, uh, that's uh, not going to see those that often. Uh, it follows up nicely, actually, this question um, about approaching your season from AS19 again, Discord. Are you planning to stay in F3 for two years? And if so, how much does that affect the pressure you're feeling this year? And is that something you actually think of before the season starts? Uh, I actually think to do the best I can this season, then you know, the results come. Because in F4, I was expecting to do two seasons, but I just get the season the best I could. And at the end, I just needed one. So, yeah, of course, you know, it's, uh, it was really special conditions because the uh UAE helped a lot but yeah this is only we're starting in a in a good point I think and uh, of course we're going to try to get the best out of it and then you know the best chance to have for next year we're going to take it so we hope to we hope to get uh, the best chance for next year it doesn't matter if uh, in a higher category or in the same you know it depends how the season goes really but is that something that you and your team speak about early on um with this, it looks like we've got a, a random guest joining very late. Maybe the time is wrong. Um, but Francesca, do you have something like with regards to if we finish tenth or above, that I will move into F two? Um, I don't. I don't think you really have that for the moment. Um, we are just looking for you know getting the best results and it doesn't you know it depends as well not just on the result but on the chances you get for next year because uh you know you, it depends what kind of teams uh, you can go to or uh, uh what thing you can get together so that can make a bit of a difference but uh yeah we have to see what 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 offers you have on the table for the next season mostly it doesn't really matter the results I would like to think that you'll win the title this year, become in F2, and Prima will just snap you for next year, right? That's that's the plan. <laughs> well, we see, we see. We, we try to get the best. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not uh, assured that, uh, you know, it's the be- it depends what's the best choice. We aim, to, we aim to do the best season we can, then we see for next season. I would like to make plans too early. No, I understand completely. A very uh, political well answered. Um, <laughs> this one comes in, just a couple more. This one comes in from Tactical Glow Stick. Great name. Uh, how is it adjusting to an F3 car? I know we spoke about it a bit earlier, but you've gone through different uh, machinery now. How does it feel going into the F3 car for the first time this time around? And how did it compare with getting into the regional car, the F4 car the first time? I think for the first time now we get to drive a small F1. I think until <laughs> regional you drive more of a like a big cart, and then you know, now you drive like for the first time uh, like a uh, uh, small Formula One. So then you know you have the uh, it's a fully different car. There's a lot more downforce and the, the brakes are way more efficient. Uh, the driving side is different because the tires you know are can overheat uh like easily so then that can make a difference and uh, of course the you know it's you have to manage a lot more things you have the rs you have the the tires dropping a lot more you have to manage the warm up a bit differently because the peak is really important you have just one lap and not many on a road so then it's a big difference i think uh the car i don't know feels lighter uh in the region because you have you know a lot more uh, core speed than the other cars and uh, you know you, it feels like you brake late and you go fast uh, on corner and you go earlier on power so then <laughs> everything is better but you know the car feels feels good and as well the position of the seat is a bit different so you have to get a bit adapted and the steering wheel is a lot bigger as well and more buttons oh, but it's, it's a small things you just don't think about isn't it Charlie yeah. and I just me immortals we're just used to driving without having all these Fancy little bits and pieces. Um, yeah, I think it's actually the double. I think no, maybe even more because you have been 
in the three car you have i think eight buttons and three uh like switches you know the one that you change uh i don't know what they are exactly called and you have the like those and like in regional i think you have maybe six and in f4 you have four so then <laughs> it's many really, things yeah I mean, do you have to like go through training to learn all of them like before you get in the car is that no, something that simulator because... works it's not too too hard because you get uh, many you don't use you never nearly never use because they're like just two for the pages to switch, which you don't really use. You always all the same page while you drive, oh. and then you have like the BSC that you just when the BSC comes out the limiter and stuff like that, and then you have one that is just nothing. So you just have one nothing button, and <laughs> uh, and then there is like you have to to clutch paddles, which normally we have at the foot in regional, and now we have the the end clutch so that's different and uh yeah of course now you have throttle maps and clutch maps so you have a bit of things to change and there is as well uh nothing switch <laughs> and nothing all these nothing buttons and nothing switches yeah there are there, there are two nothing things but they are there so they are buttons <laughs> well maybe those buttons are there and you don't know it yet to help you with this final question this one comes from mm. william alitalo and he wants to know if William Alatello is in front of you on the racetrack, how are you able to overtake him? I have secret boosts. I yeah, that's what the buttons are. <laughs> that's what the, we found the button. <laughs> I, I can find the buttons. I think it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough with him because last year I think in uh, in Zandvoort he, he he overtook me for fourth place. Uh, I think uh, in the second lap, and then I couldn't get him back. It was a bit faster, but. And I think there was as well as some other races where we have some really good fights. But I think in Monza I overtook him. So in Monza I overtook him. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's a really tough driver to race. He's a good racer. I like he has, how he has, William has little faith in himself if he's in front of you. Not when, <laughs> if. <laughs> well, we both know that Francesco is going to F2 have to win the title this year. That's all, Straight to all, F1. Yes. The Mercedes. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Did Haas, Haas were probably calling you up Haas. already, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I spoke. I'm going to Bahrain. Actually, I'm in Bahrain now. I told you I'm not, oh. I'm not home. Yeah, I'm in Bahrain. <laughs> F1 feeder series exclusive. Can you ask one question, Charlie? Yeah, yeah, go, 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 ask, please. To Charlie and Jim, so the for, for you two guys, where do you put me at the end of the season? I don't have goals, but what goals you have for me? Uh, it's ask F1 FS for Odi Francesco <laughs> be asking the questions. Um, I'm not here. Yeah, for those of you <laughs> listening rather than watching, Charlie seems to have disappeared off the bottom of the screen somehow. <laughs> no, it's a really good question. Um, let me have just a quick look through the grid because like we mentioned to start with about <laughs> the top four teams are pretty strong. I think you can push I think you can push into the top 12. If you get the top 10, I'll be super impressed. So that's your target from me. How about you, Charlie? Top 12 at best. <laughs> Thank you. It means that I can actually have some reverse grid in the front. We've got somebody think, in the yeah. we've got somebody in the live chat here uh, called Pepe Marti who says he's never heard of him. in the top two behind Francesco Pizzi as well <laughs> so that's all the answers that we've got um, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be really happy if I finish second behind him because I know I finished second behind uh the you know the a Formula One driver because it's gonna do us uh, F1 and uh, F3 driver with campus as well you know so I'm gonna be proud to be second to F1 driver <laughs> Perfect. Well, second place. You've heard it here again. No, I think, yeah, top 12, top 10. Um, well, we wish you the best and we'll keep up to date on how you're going and maybe get you back on the podcast a little bit later this year. But for the moment, thank you both of you. This is all the time we have this week. Thank you, everybody, if you're still watching and listening at this point. If you'd like to have your question asked in a future episode, use the hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube or let us know what questions you have on your mind on our Discord. Look for the podcast questions channel. If you are watching on YouTube, drop a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel all really helps us out. And if you're listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. And finally, check out f1feederseries.com for some more feeder series insight, including the wise words of Charlie Parker and follow wow. F1 Feeder Series 1, F1 FS Americas and F1 FS Live on Twitter. You can find the links to all of those plus the Twitter accounts for myself and everyone else in the podcast in the YouTube description follow or me. the podcast show notes. 
follow Charlie, follow Francesco, follow me, and follow those F1 Feeder Series accounts. Until next time, we've been the F1 Feeder Series podcast. Goodbye.